What's up, Sam? How you doing, Playboy? Yo, Jordan, we out here today. How you doing? We out here, so I'm great. You know? Yeah, that's, that's what I like to hear. On today's <laughs> episode, we got a very special guest. We have the uh, managing partner at 2 Plus 2 Management, Louis Kunstler. Louis is a, is a super experienced manager. I think that uh, about three years ago, he partnered up with the 2 Plus 2 Management team to really open up and lead their operations in the U.S., 2 Plus 2 has an incredible roster of some very eclectic electronic acts. That's Dead, Toki Monster, Seth Troxler, Machine Drum, Soul Clap, Holly. I mean, the, the list goes on. These guys are no joke. Um, I was really grateful because I even actually had a chance to work with Lewis with my company, Knox, um, to help develop one of his artists and, and kind of help her grow across socials. But what I really appreciated in collaboration with them was their kind of team's proactive approach to really creating a cohesive narrative around an artist and really ensuring and poking all the right holes to, to ensure that the team's collective efforts were translating into growth. Um, I think outside of his experience working as a, as a manager, I mean, even prior to that, he spent a lot of time working as a promoter and got his hand into the event, uh, event promotion game. So I think he has this wealth of knowledge um, that is incredibly valuable for any artist or manager that's really looking to build an audience in a sustainable career in the music. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, man. I mean, he obviously has had a pretty decorated career, so I'm just glad we got to speak to him. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting is that 2 Plus 2 has actually signed managers with artists in the past, and I don't think a lot of people have heard about what that process is like. So we actually get into, you know, what attributes Lewis looks for when signing managers to 2 Plus 2, and that'll not only help artists get a better idea of, you know, what their managers should should uh, reflect in their values and their attributes, but also, you know, as a manager yourself, I think you can learn a lot from that. Uh, we speak a lot on how two plus two has uh, navigated since the pandemic and how they've shifted their business model. I think a lot of people can learn from that. Uh, shout out Twitch. Um, and we also we also went over what, you know, and I think a lot of people are interested in this in every episode that we have with ANRs and managers in particular is uh, what Lewis looks for in an artist prior to signing them. Um, and it's not necessarily just this, mu this artist's music is good. They're actually, you know, attributes and qualities uh, of, a, of a business person that he looks for as well. So that's, uh, I think, super interesting. And I think people will learn a lot from it. Yeah, for sure, man. So really excited to dive into this week's episode. But be right before we dive in, we did want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Vidya. Jordan, you want to tell our listeners what Vidya is all about? Absolutely. Video is an end-to-end -end music technology platform that provides labels and managers with the infrastructure and technology to power their business. They offer global audio and video distribution, supply chain management, analytics, right management, payments, detailed revenue reporting, marketing, and more. They're a premium partner of, of several services, including Spotify, Apple, TikTok, Vivo, YouTube, Facebook, as well as broadcast networks like BET, MTV, and Music Choice. But why should you care, right? Let them know, Sam. No, yeah, this is why. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think at the, the foundation, too, I mean, I, I think for us it's so critically important that if we're partnering with a, very, with a uh, specific sponsor, that it's a product that we genuinely want to endorse for our listeners. And I think given my experience as a, as a marketer and Jordan's experience as a manager, their platform has tons of truly invaluable features. Um, so that you can really focus on your business strategy and scaling your business. I think they're really all about helping independent labels, managers um, provide that back office support so that way you can really focus on scaling and not get bogged down by a lot of these other components needed to really have as kind of these foundational elements of your business. So I think they continue to also partner with the top independent talent. They, they recently, I mean, this last week, announced their partnership with Akon's label, Convict Culture. But how do you sign up, Jordan? Um, well, we worked with the video team to actually create a unique application page exclusively for music business podcast listeners that we're like really excited about. So if you're looking for a premier distribution partner, go to video.com slash MVP for music business podcast, video.com slash MVP. This is an application only service. They're giving a little preferential treatment when it comes to evaluating some of the applications uh, from the music business podcast listeners. So I think whether you're an artist, a label, a manager, you're getting ready to release some new music and looking for a really awesome distribution partner, I really want to encourage you guys to check out Vidya. So definitely go to that link, vydia.com slash MVP to, to submit your application. But without any further ado, let's get into this week's episode with Mr. Lewis Kunstler. Lewis, welcome to the show. How are you today, man? Good, man. Good. Yes. Yeah, keeping at it. 
Yeah, very excited to have you on, man. I think I've always uh, feel like you have like a super eclectic roster of different artists that you get to work with. So I'm, I'm sure that keeps you on your toes. Never gets never gets dull. Never a dull moment. Just um, yeah. So I'd love to start just from your experience. I mean, I know you've been working in management for a while, but just uh, obviously two plus two has grown a lot. I mean, the, the roster does span a lot of different types of um, really talented artists. So can you just kind of talk through the backstory of, I mean, how you really got involved with two plus two and how you've really gone on to uh, build it into where you're at now today? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a long story. I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. I, um, two plus two started, um, about 10 years ago in Canada. Um, Adam Gill started two plus two, um, started managing like Zed's dead and uh, grand theft and a bunch of uh, Canadian acts. And, um, I, he was also a promoter and was booking a bunch of, of my acts to actually go through Zed's dead club. They did like a, a weekly called base mentality. Um, out in Canada. And I, you know, he was booking the tours that I was, uh, putting together, uh, as a manager at, in like the early 2000, like 2010 around that time. And so we just became friends and did a bunch of work together, uh, over the years, um, across different platforms and then just tried to figure out a way to like grow our businesses together. And so we basically merged our com our companies, uh, the beginning I think it was the beginning of 2017. So this is like year three of two plus two USA, I guess we call it, but it's, you know, I, I basically opened the, the American arm to two plus two. Right. That's amazing. And then, I mean, in, in that time span, I mean, obviously the, the roster has grown a lot. Can you talk through some of the different, um, some of the big like inflection points in your, in your journey in that, that span? Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing, that happened was uh well yeah i guess from in 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 the time in the time lapse or time period that we went through like basically bringing on like jonathan mcdonald uh who managed soul clap and justin martin and wolf and lamb and a bunch of the house stuff uh we brought him on pretty like he was the first person i went after when we did our deal um with adam and i you know he basically was like you know if you wanted to bring on other managers like who would you you know want to go after um and so i went after jonathan and then a couple other managers and and instead of like going after uh, artists at that point we were like focusing on bringing in uh managers that needed infrastructure and and people that we respected that we like their their, their roster so we basically yeah. went that approach um and then i just focused on doing more uh um kind of like back end stuff instead of signing uh, more acts i kind of focused on signing managers and helping give them kind of uh the infrastructure they needed to grow their their business yeah so uh, what uh what do you actually look for when you when you're thinking about like working with a manager i think a lot of our listeners would be interested in, in the the strengths that you think are are what uh managers should have before you kind of take that next step with them i'm just wondering kind of what that process was like for you um well i mean i kind of look look for things that I find in myself, you know, which is like, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, like our managers that have actually developed acts um, and taken acts from baby bands to whatever club or theater kind of um, environment, stuff like that. People that, you know, have a background being a promoter. Like I've always kind of had a <laughs> lot of respect, respect for people that have taken risks with their own um, money and like taking the time to be a promoter. Like if you could do that, you can kind of like, definitely take the uh the energy of being a manager um right a lot a lot easier because the level of, of stress that goes into to promoting and, and investing in your own shows is like kind of kind of like a good uh uh good path i guess you know it's just like if you can get through promoting your own shows and even if they're not successful you know it's like it's still a a, a, a learning process that if you can get through that then right you had some good failures good yeah 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 so that's that's kind of like the two things that i look for and then obviously like obviously the talent is important making sure that they have a good ear um for for talent and then uh what is i guess the discovery process kind of like for you guys at, at two plus two in terms of in terms of artists like what are some of the things that you look for and not just uh you know whether the music is good or not but you know what you see in in the artist whether it's their work ethic or you know those type of qualities as well um, I think 
I'm, I mean, I can speak for myself. Um, it's mm-hmm. just like a re- originality, uh, creativity and, and, um, you know, work ethic, I think are like the three things that I look for mostly. Uh, obviously nowadays you got to look a little deeper and see if they're, they understand the digital landscape as well as they do the musical landscape. Right. So, uh, it's just the reality that we're in right now. You know, it's just, you know, making music and I mean, there's so much good music out there, but you, um, don't understand how the digital ethos works. Like you, the music has to be a hundred times better basically. Right. So. It sort it sort of reminds me of, um, you know, over the course of a few years, everybody has kind of said every company will turn into a tech company. And in music, it's like every company will turn into a digital marketing company at some point, like kind of <laughs> yeah. have that as being a part of their core ethos at some point. Cause you can't, you can't really function now as a music company without having some sort of strong backbone in digital marketing. Um, we were just talking with a few of our Patreons the other day about digital marketing. And, and one of the Patreons was like, you know, how important do you think it is for an artist to actually know those sort of things? And uh, Sam kind of said, you know, the, the more you know, the better, because you're kind of more in control of, of what your brand looks like and how you actually push it on the internet. So I do think that like looking for that in artists up front is, is uh, it's like the next level of what you look for in an artist. But I do think it definitely probably breeds some, some very smart artists that know how to, you know, navigate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's definitely, I mean, Sam knows better than I do. I mean, that's his world, but like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's super important to, uh, to just at least have some sort of understanding of, right. of the, what's going on in, uh, in the digital space, you know, and there's so many different ways to do it, you know, but you just definitely have to have your niche way of, of connecting with your fans and connecting with, you know, brands and everything else right that, that trend you know translates so yeah a thousand percent when it comes to um uh, i mean when it comes to the side of infrastructure and maybe like the digital marketing is a component but i know you were mentioning partnering with managers to be able to provide them with some level of infrastructure needed to scale their business like as uh, i mean you have a lot of experience as a manager i mean even prior to two plus two like when you think about the the, the most valuable infrastructural elements what comes to mind and what have you intentionally tried to build with two plus two? Um, I mean, just like it, it, strong accounting and legal. Um, those two, uh, just initial like communication, uh, also just like back end giving people access to like a lot of our forms and, and, you know, contact lists and, and just, you know, all the back end of what you need, basically having access to, everything from a simple NDA to whatever uh, forms you'd need from a, a management agreement to a site artist agreement to whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and just having access to those types of things in a, in a, in a way that you, you know, could either save you money or save you time. Right. Yeah. No, that makes tons of sense. And in that same yeah. vein too, I mean, when it comes to like, I mean, there's a lot of different like functions and like services involved in growing, developing and, and kind of fueling the machine of like a successful artist, like your PR, digital marketing, legal, all this stuff. I mean, when, how, do, how do you think about like the value of bringing stuff in-house versus the value of like outsourcing stuff? I mean, even some of the things you mentioned might very well not be like full-time employees on the team, but are still just like legal resources you have in place. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's weird. It's a, it's a good question. I, I, I've, I've done both ways. We've tried to do digital marketing in-house. We've, brought in graphics in-house we've you know done all kinds of different things and like at the end of the day it just really depends on on uh how much money you're you're making and how often you need those resources you know what i mean like you know if you're managing a bunch of record labels within your company like it's probably a good idea to have um as some in-house uh, staff like we had a uh, in-house lawyer for the past three years um and then she you know the pandemic came, but luckily before that, she got a, a great job <coughs> at Rosemary Carroll in New York. So, uh, yeah, but you know, I think like there's, it really depends on how much, um, work those people are going to be doing, you know, like if it's, it, 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 I definitely feel like it, it, it all has to be weighed out you know, Right, right now, obviously budget wise, like it's a different situation than it was, you know, three, four months ago. So, you know, now we're outsourcing a lot more, um, just based on budget. Right. 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 
So speaking of pandemic, the big elephant in the room, um, I guess, you know, in his, in what have you guys kind of pivoted your focus to? Obviously, like touring is non-existent for a lot of people. Um, what kind of things are you focusing on as a, as a company for your artists right now? Uh, I mean, the, the obvious one is, uh, is streaming events. Mm -hmm. So we've been, we've been pretty lucky. We've been um, invited to play a lot of the digital, uh, streaming, uh, festivals and, and events. And those have been pretty successful. I think like, um, gaining new fans, uh, that way. Um, the, if you don't mind me asking also, like, before you get on to the next thing, how are those digital deals structured? So like in terms of playing like a, a streaming festival, like what, how do they, you know, not necessarily how much are you paid, but how do you decide what to pay? How do you even really navigate if that's a good price for a, a virtual festival? Cause that's something that seems like it's completely new. Most of them that we've done have been for charity. Um, yeah. We haven't seen, I mean, we've seen some like MFN off offers basically like, right. uh, like those have, you know, come across the table. Um, you know, there's, you know, like huge festivals that normally pay big money that have asked us to do stuff for free. And we, you know, <laughs> we've accommodated it because it's, it's, you know, everybody's going through the same thing and they want to keep eyes on their brand and hopefully their mm -hmm. brand uh, comes out the other end of this thing, you know? Um, so we've been supported for those and they've been actually been, they work out great. I mean, I think like sometimes finding new fans is more valuable than money. Um, yeah. So then there's been like some branded brand deals uh, streams that are funded by like the B app and other things like that, that have been like, you know, paid like whatever your normal rate. Right. Um, yeah. So. Dope. Yeah. And then do, do you think, um, I guess, I guess like what's a, what's a key takeaway that you've taken since the pandemic has started, I guess, just about being a, a, a manager in a difficult time in general. Um, just gotta be way more creative with the, trying to find mm -hmm. income, you know what I mean? Like pushing, pushing production and brand deals way more than live touring. Um, right. You know, trying to just stay, stay, uh, keep, keeping eyes on the artists, but then also just keeping the artists like busy too, just make sure they're happy. Um, mm -hmm. so just, you know, just trying to keep everybody's mental, mental also in, uh, in good shape as well as right. financially because like you know this is a stressful time for artists and they're probably going through it emotionally way more than we are um based on the fact that like you know they've their whole lives they've been artists and like you know managers you know shit this thing fails like a lot of people could probably just go get jobs at spotify and fucking <laughs> whatever you know what i'm saying and like these artists you got to keep these artists like motivated and happy because they're the ones that are really taking all of their energy away, all their income away. I mean, they're, you know, obviously our income has been hit as well, but like, you know, I, I think that's the most important thing is just keeping, keeping them motivated and, and content with, with where they are, you know, cause right. it's been really stressful. So, um, right. but yeah, so we've been, you know, focusing on doing more production. Uh, we launched, um, uh, a channel with two plus two and, uh, and a, another company called Infamous PR called The Lost Resort that were basically started like a talk show for Toki Monster and then um, another talk show that's more in like the house and underground house lane. I don't even know what you call it. Just house lane, I guess. Uh, for Soul Clap called Schmoozing with Soul Clap, which is amazing. Super funny. And uh, so we've been doing that, keeping them busy with that and then kind of tying brands into those, um, those streams on Twitch. Um, and then uh, the, the, all, of, all of our artists are also part of a thing called Rave the Vote that we also launched with Infamous. That's like an online voter registration platform. That, uh, it's, good. it's like four episodes. That was supposed to be like a live tour in like college markets that uh, got shifted into a, a streaming event. That's awesome. No, and I think Lost Resort's incredible too because just the way in which you've been able to get like really interesting guests. Um, and from a marketing standpoint, just being able to, A, not only like create cool, fun content with other dope musicians, but like creates this like cross pollination effect. Um, yeah, it's been good. What, what, I mean, when it comes to like Twitch, I mean, it definitely seems like, I know Twitch was already making a lot of moves when it came to 
trying to build up market share and awareness within the music community prior to the pandemic. But obviously the, the pandemic was a major catalyst as far as adoption within the music industry. I mean, do you personally feel like Twitch is like really here to stay within music? Um, I mean, I feel like they're making moves um, to, you know, they obviously got some legal stuff they got to deal with before they could actually really, really grow with like VOD. But mm -hmm. I do think um, that they're making moves uh, on a like kind of uh, entertainment space. You know what I mean? Obviously, like just getting some of these streams together that they have, like, um, and some of the viewership that they're getting is it's just it's pretty cool. And I think I think the Twitch uh, world is like actually like also kind of uh, like adapting to it. You know, because you could see the streamers, uh, the gamers, kind of like in the chats, like kind of like confused of what's going on. But then they're like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty good. Like I'm having a good time. And like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not that I read all the comments on uh, Twitch, but <laughs> yeah. I'm in there. Yeah. Um, I actually was thinking about this the other day, Sam, for Twitch specifically. Um, you know, we had a guest come on earlier that said by the time by the time it's a good idea to start your business, it's already too late. Like you've kind of already missed the market on it. And I kind of see that with Twitch in the same way, where it's like they started this thing and built this foundation that was so strong that yeah, the pandemic was an opportunity to grow, but they were ready for it in like a really major way because they had already, you know, laid the foundation for an influx of people to their platform for music. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, what are you guys, are you guys seeing some good, good info on Twitch and like, you know, I feel like, I don't know, what, what do you guys feel about Twitch? I think Twitch is not going anywhere. I think the being able to... Um, I think the user base growth, I think it, it's like the most consumed when it comes to live streams on the internet, it gets more live stream consumption than any other website on the internet. Yeah. Than YouTube. I think that alone is really interesting. I, I think once we get back into a world where there is like live events and live touring, we'll just start to see more like mixed Twitch channels where people are able right. to really like live stream at shows. There is something really cool that like, I think it's called the, the IRL backpack. Um, but they, Twitch is essentially, uh, yeah, the IRL backpack, but they essentially have like, it's like a little camera um, that has, and then it has like a encoder so you can broadcast video and audio from like a bad pack. I, right, I think yeah. that'll get like really interesting. Even like Twitch's music yeah. partnerships team has like 30 of these backpacks that they just dish out to different artists and stuff. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see how it like, it isn't just like another DJ with a green screen, like doing a DJ set, but it starts to like go into their life as an artist and interact. Right. With right. I think that'll get really Yeah. It's going to evolve. That's interesting. That's, that's cool. I definitely think like, I mean, who knows what, I mean, it's going to be full Truman show by like 2022. Yeah. For sure. yeah exactly. <laughs> no doubt. For sure. Um, yeah. That part's exciting. When it comes to like, I, I mean, I think you've been super progressive on some of the, on the content front with some of the different artists. I mean, Lost Resort with, with Toki Monster, uh, the Soul Clap, Shmuzu with Soul Clap. Um, when you think about, like, what will, I mean, touring and live shows, obviously it's like a guessing game as to when exactly it'll come back. I mean, some people are saying, like, mid-2021. I mean, some people, who knows, maybe 2022. It's, it's, it, nobody knows. But at the end of the day, people do know that inevitably it will come back. With that said, when it comes to what artists can really be doing now to lay a really, really strong foundation so that when it comes back, like their leaps and bounds uh, ahead of where they were in the, uh, this arbitrary leaderboard, if you will, what do you feel are some of those most important things to really focus on? I mean, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, I, you know, I think like staying relevant is the most important thing and, and kind of adapting to, to the changes. Right. And, uh, and, you know, I think there's a few people out there doing it really well. Um, like Diplo and Dylan went crazy on, on their streaming stuff. They're getting huge numbers. They pulled back, but like, you know, I think those guys are going to be where they were when, when it, when the pandemic hit, you know, Toki, I think also and done a great job on adapting. Um, uh, also I think releasing music during this period and like getting creative on socials is, is going to be super important too. Just, just, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, I think there was like a, a, a big need for people to put out music, but are you going to put out bangers right now? Like, I, I think you just, you know, maybe, <laughs> I don't, not sure as much, but you know, I don't know. 
Uh, it's a good, really good question. I mean, that we talk about it every day, and and I think I think the the most important thing is just just staying visible, and then also being as you know supportive of uh, society as much as you can. You know what I mean? Like doing the 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 positive things for for your fans, like even like doing production tutorials or just getting out in front of your fans as much as you can in in different ways is going to be important. Um, I'm not sure if there's like one groundbreaking thing that might keep you relevant or make you bigger, but I mean, obviously the streaming, the live streams are like the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, I think people are still figuring that out. Like I'm sure people will do some things during the pandemic that don't, that don't work. Like there'll be a little, there'll be a little too late on IG live or something and people aren't watching or, um, they'll collaborate with something that someone that no one really was interested in their, them collaborating with, or I still, I still think there are mistakes to be made, but it'll be interesting to see like who, who, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll remember like who really took advantage of the pandemic, you know? So um, it'll be interesting to see like when it's over and we look back and I mean, I've already seen like Timbaland and Swiss beats on the cover of a virtual magazine for verses. So, I mean, there's two right there, but um, yeah. Yeah. Others that will take advantage of it as well. When it comes to yeah. the you know, when it comes to the side of diversifying revenue streams, I know you mentioned you mentioned like brand branded live streams, brand deals. Um, I mean, what other what have been in the other like legitimate mechanisms of like generating revenue for artists? Have you seen success with merch or or what are these other like different avenues that you've really been trying to press into? Yeah, we went from like quarterly merch drops to monthly, and mm-hmm. just reducing the numbers of units we're doing. Um, and just keeping them more limited. So that's something we've been doing with our, our artists. Um, that's been working really well. Um, uh, what other revenue streams? I mean, obviously like just, just pushing, pushing our, our releases as best we can. Cause you know, luckily a lot of our artists own, own the music that they put out. So we're, you know, we get direct income from the streaming income that we get. Uh, so we've been really focusing on marketing and promoting some the records we're putting out. Uh, obviously do that anyway, but now we're just like hyper focused on it. Um, and then just, yeah, just, just the brand deals trying to figure out like, you know, a uh, schedule for the next like six months of what you're going to be working on brand wise has been something that we've been really hyper focused on. Um, and, and yeah, luckily we do have these, these platforms that we have like the lost resort and stuff like that to sell against, which has been pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. and getting a really, really good response, uh, from brands, uh, who are being really supportive of podcasts and streaming live streams and, and everything else. So that's been good. Yeah. That's amazing. When it comes to marketing records, uh, obviously it's, it's a never, it's an ever changing landscape. I mean, you've got like paid media campaigns, TikTok influencer campaigns, Instagram shout out campaign, like campaigns, campaigns, campaigns. Like what do yeah. you, what do you see as far <laughs> as like the, the, ideal like rollout mix if you will or like what what is piquing your interest recently what have you been seeing work well and i mean i think at the end of the day like as you know it's like kind of like the content is like the most important thing right mm-hmm. like and then you just back it up by like paid media and then you know influencer campaigns after that you know yeah. but it, ha- it has to be like the the, the full monty four-part you know attack you know, it's just it. you know, the content has to be good. You know, you have to have the ad spends behind that. Um, the artist support on socials, uh, then obviously like whichever, if it is working and you do feel it's good, then you go to like third party playlisting, um, mm-hmm. TikTok campaign. I, I, I you know, I, I not a hundred percent on the TikTok stuff just cause I think the music I work on is a little bit, uh, a little left right personally but i do think i do see it working for people that like young bay when you know that bad boy song started hitting like you know the amount of money we spent on tiktok alone was you know substantial and it worked you know you could see the streams go from like you know it starts hitting viral charts and stuff like that so um it it really depends on the artist too right so but yeah I, i think it's like a you have to go 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 for it right like right yeah uh, it, and it is cool because like we we have seen um like the paid media work on initially but then also like getting these relationships with people that have big playlists that are not 
through Spotify, like third party stuff has been a great way to build too, especially mm. in like the, in the base space with uh, the deadbeats guys. Like they've, they've accumulated a huge um, uh, network of people that they support and that support them, you know? Yeah. And I think like, I think in, in, in a lot of these genres like that, I don't want to call it like a new SoundCloud repost network, but I do think it is kind of a that vibe, like that kind of, kind of a, uh, kind of technique which is cool and I, it's, it's also you get to support the other artists that you like as well you know so yeah dope dope cool um so we got a couple questions from our patrons on our patreon um i think i get that we get this question a good amount it's always interesting to see uh you know what managers say because management obviously is such like a, a varied and diversified field every manager manages their artists in a different way um but what do you think at what point do you think an artist should reach out to a manager and how can an artist build leverage to bring to that manager? That's from uh, one of our patrons, David Lee. Um, I think a good time to reach out to a manager is when you can't manage your business yourself. You know what I mean? Cause I think it's mm -hmm. the most important thing is to understand your business, but mm -hmm. if it's getting in the way of you, your other job, which is being creative, um, that means you're actually busy. And right. to a point where you do need help. Like I know people that barely start projects and they start reaching out to managers. And I'm just like, I mean, are you really getting it hit on a daily basis by 10, 10 different things? Like where you need right. a manager or like, are you still developing, you know, your project? And, you know, I think that's, that's a good, good barometer to know when you need, you need help is when you can't keep up with, with what's going on between your music and your day to day, uh, management of your project um and that's a good amount of leverage in itself like look i'm really busy <laughs> like I'm, get, I'm getting a lot yeah. of work you know yeah um uh, yeah that's great or or cool. if you you know you can't do it yourself because you just don't know but you're you know i don't know this is a terrible way to say it because you should really know what what's going on on the business side just as mm -hmm. much as your man as your manager does i mean obviously your manager should have a lot more relationships and and stuff to bring to the table but you should understand your business like contracts and other stuff that's coming in and you know really so i guess on the flip side of that do you think that there's a time where it's too early to get a manager like if a manager reaches out so i think in this situation they're thinking of artists reaching out to managers but do you think a, a manager like hearing one track and you don't really know what you're doing is like too early to to to, to, to sign with them or is it is it more like you know i don't i don't think so if someone reaches out and wants uh, to help you for for free because it will be for free until you're making money like i would right. take the help yeah <laughs> it's free right. help <laughs> yeah yeah very true very you know true. what i mean yeah um and this next question is from darren at at uh on our patreon and i've actually um dealt with this a good amount being in management myself but like how do you keep it how do you, how are you honest with your artists but at the same time like remain hopeful and inspiring so it's sort of like you got to be like the 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 energy that kind of helps them be creative and can push them forward and give them a lot of confidence while at the same time be like, yo, this makes no fucking sense based on, based on the things that you've come out with, or, yo, this brand deal that you think is so important to you actually doesn't make sense for this next step for you. Like, honestly, like, how do you kind of ride that line? Um, that's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward, you know, mm -hmm. like you just tell them your opinion anyway, it's your opinion. You know, it's your educated opinion, but it's your opinion, and you have to be right. honest with your art, with your artists, um, and that's why they're they're they trust you, you know. And like sometimes it pisses them off, and sometimes they think they're right, and you go, you know, go back and forth with them, and you know, and then if they they want to do whatever they're gonna do at the end of the day, right? Like, you, yeah, you know, you, you're gonna you're just here to support them, but like you know, it, it's just being honest and being straightforward and not like. Um, kind of like make you know you just have to be honest and then you know obviously when you're being honest with them you give them the reasons as well you don't just be like no you know you just <laughs> be like these are the reasons why i think this you know needs to be this way or that's a bad idea you know it's just like so you can't just come at artists with like that's just a bad idea it's like, like this doesn't work this doesn't work i wish it did i wish i didn't have to explain myself sometimes but i you know no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's just being honest. It's super important in the relationship, you know? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And artists, obviously, like you're saying, expect that from you too, even if they get upset. 
Um, I think artists can tell when their managers are being ingenuine and, and saying yes, just to say yes. And I think that's way worse than, than pissing them off because you decided to have a differing opinion. Yeah. Um, and then the last question from Danny is other than adding more talent, what areas are you focusing on in terms of growth for two plus two? Um, I mean, the, the lost resort thing has been a big focus for us mm -hmm. uh, as, as a company. Um, that's been super important. And then, um, just, I, you know, I think that's, that's been the main focus, obviously right. just, just getting into the streaming, streaming space pretty heavily. I mean, we got like a whole new show that's going to be coming every once a week with Valerie Lee. Um, that's going to be, uh, followed up by another show called snacks, uh, which is just going to be like just new music kind of like supporting new music that's coming out. So, um, we, we've, you know, at the, by the middle of next month, we're going to have like five shows on Lost Resort. Mm. So it's been a lot of work. I mean, we have like three teams working on it um, full time pretty much at this, at this point. Um, right. Uh, but yeah. And then just trying to stay, stay, stay alive, really. I mean, trying to, <laughs> trying to do math, math every day. <laughs> yeah, man. A, I should become an accountant. <laughs> right, right, right. When it comes to some of the, the favorite artists on your roster that you feel has just been a fun, like, journey and uh, you feel like there's been a really awesome kind of ascent and obviously still growing in each and every way with every single artist, but, like, who have been some of your favorite artists to really work with and what have been some of the biggest kind of turning points in their career? Uh, honestly, I'm pretty lucky. I, I really, like, my roster personally, like, I, there isn't anybody on it that I'm not, like, as excited about. You know, yeah. like I have, I have a very kind of fluid um, relationship with them all. And I'm very excited to work with all of them. Like, you know, I mean, Holly is my newest client uh, out mm -hmm. of Portugal. And um, that developed, like that process working with him, like from where, where we started, like to now has been exciting, you know, but I mean, they're all, you know, Toki just dropped an album. I'm in the middle of an album with Machine Drum. You know, uh, Sherwin is a, a new artist that's part of a producer duo that I manage called Too Fresh that him and his brother are both doing crazy things right now. We produce most, a bunch of Duckworth's album writing constantly. I, there, I, I don't think there's anybody in, in particular that I'm more excited about than the other, you know. I'm excited yeah. that they all support each other, which is actually pretty fucking cool. Um, yeah. yeah that's an amazing thing that actually gets me more excited about life or being in this business than, than anything else. Is that like, there's like a cool community within the roster that I work with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, like machine drums produced on or uh, machine drum and Holly produce a record together, like a full so, project. Toki's mixing one of uh, Holly's records. Machine drum has mixed some of Holly stuff. Uh, Holly's done additional production on Machine Drums album, five tracks. Like it's it's just it's 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 amazing, you know. So that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's like a that, one or the other. Yeah, I mean, has that stuff when when it comes to the collaboration across the artists? I mean, has that been a pretty organic process? Because I, I do feel like sometimes, even with, when it comes to like labels and management companies, it's like the marketer in me is like, bro, all you need to do yeah. is make each other like cross promote each yeah. other. And this will all work. Yeah. <laughs> like, but exactly. I, I know you can't like force that stuff too. So like, I mean, how is that, what sort of way and have you kind of tried to cultivate an environment that's allowed for that to happen? I've done it. I haven't forced anybody like, or like suggested too much. I just connected people and just, right. you know, they've also hung out together and stuff. So like, and, and I, it's, you know, like I met, I met Holly on tour with Toki. And so like, mm -hmm. that was like an organic thing from the jump, you know what right. I mean? Like, uh, no, I don't know. I don't, it, it's, it's, it, I, I don't, I don't like to push, uh, that type of stuff on people too much just because right. it never works. Um, yeah. but it's just, it's just been organic. And plus like, I don't know, we've been really lucky. Like the interaction between all of our, our roster has been really, really cool. You know, everybody's been like supportive of, of each other. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, feel it. Yeah. That's amazing. Cool. And then um, just one question I'm kind of wondering is uh, what do you think are, you know, one of the biggest strengths that, you, that you've developed as a manager over the years? Um, from when I started to now? Yeah. I think it's just the, like, on the legal side, really, just starting to understand contracts more and the publishing, mm -hmm. the publishing 
world. Um, uh, and just, yeah, that, that's kind of the two things that I think like are, I had no, I came from being a promoter. Like I, you know, I started passing out flyers when I was like 14. <laughs> I didn't even graduate high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, like I just, you know, I had to learn everything on the, uh, on the, on the go. And I think the most important thing was just like really understanding agreements and, um, and, uh, yeah, just, yeah, obviously like accounting and stuff too, like some of that wasn't in my blood that has become something that I, I pride myself on as far as right. like keeping, track, keeping track, you know, spreadsheets and, and, uh, just keep being organized, you know, those are like yeah. the things that kind of keep everything in motion, you know? Right. Absolutely. There's something about being organized in management too. That's like very satisfying because management just by as a, as a, <laughs> as like a whole is just a super disorganized thing to do. So when you can get yeah. like, bring some rhyme or reason to it, it's like, you feel like you're on top of a mountain or something. So I, t- I totally, yeah. I totally get that. I totally yeah. Get that. And surrounding myself with really, with, with, with talented people, like in mm-hmm. that space as well, like has been, you know, a blessing. And I've learned a lot um, just from the people that have come into my life and uh, just learning from everybody and everything that's happened as, you know, being more open than like just thinking, you know, everything is another thing that I attribute to like, the growth that I've had, you know, I'm I'm still still learning, but like, luckily I keep meeting smarter and smarter people and getting better um, because of that. So. Right. That's amazing. Well, it's been fun to see all the the progress to date, man. I I know there's still uh, a lot of fun, major accomplishments on the horizon, man. So, so keep up the good work, brother. Trying, man. Trying my best. It's been, uh, (laughs) it's been, it's been, it's been an interesting year and like, you know, thankful that, I still have a job. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's fun, man. Yeah, well, Lewis, appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. you, Lewis. Yeah, it's a good, good, good combo, guys. Thanks for asking. Uh, always. All right. Peace. Cheers. So what did you think about the episode, bro? What did you think, man? How you feeling? Yo, man, I thought the episode was great, dude. Um, I, you know, it's my first time meeting Lewis, and he obviously really has a lot of knowledge to spread. I mean, he even said after the episode he thought it was easy, and obviously it is for him because he has so much knowledge to give. So I was just super glad to get him on. I think managers are super interesting in particular to have on because every, there's so many different ways to manage an artist, um, and there's so many different ways to structure a company, uh, especially a management company. So I'm glad we kind of got into the weeds of everything, um, as well as how important like accounting and legal are, as a di- in addition to being a creative manager and communicating with your artists in a way that respects them, but where you also keep it real. So what'd you think, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I particularly enjoyed, I mean, how he's gone about navigating the pandemic and identifying different kind of revenue streams for the different artists he's working with. So I really enjoyed hearing how their kind of merch strategy shifted and pivoted away from doing quarterly drops to monthly drops with very limited yep. qualities to create a little bit of hype. Hashtag Supreme. Um, I think the way he's gone about continuing to really lean heavily into content and broadcasting on Twitch, super valuable, building kind of a, a channel in partnership with one of their artists, the, the Lost Resort channel with Toki Monster, I think is really cool. I, I think management companies that are leaning into building their own owned media series is incredibly, incredibly valuable and smart move. So really uh, kudos, hats off to Lewis on that <laughs> one. Um, really enjoyed it all in all. But with that said, before we, uh, before we dip out, I do want to thank our sponsor once again, Vidya. I think Vidya has an incredible platform when it comes to helping you as, a, as an independent artist, label, manager, scale your business. I think their ability to help distribute your music and your videos across all these different digital platforms and DSPs, whether it's uh, Spotify, Apple, TikTok, YouTube. I mean, these guys are a premium partner um, with all these different DSPs and different platforms. And with that premium partnership that they have, it gives them access to a handful of different features and offerings that you might not be able to get elsewhere. So um, if you haven't already, I encourage you to check out more. And if you want to be a part of Vidya, go ahead to uh, fill out the application at vidya.com slash MVP. That is V-Y-D-I-A dot com slash MVP. Um, without any further ado, we appreciate y'all and we'll be back next week. One love. <laughs>